You're listening to the God, God Life, Life Culture, Culture Podcast, Podcast, where faith and what's trending collide. Welcome, welcome back to a new episode of the God Life Culture Podcast. This is Eddie. What's up, everyone? This is Miguel, and we are so excited that you are tuned in for a brand new episode of the God Life Culture Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, we are excited for everything that's in store uh, today. We want to remind you to subscribe to our podcast uh, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Find us on there, hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when we drop a new episode. And don't forget to leave us a rating and a review. We appreciate it. Eddie, how are you feeling today? I am feeling great overall. Just happy to have another day of life, another day to, you know, just be alive and do our daily due diligence that, you know, which is like work and family stuff and all that other things. Um, But today was one of those interesting days where, you know, we have a lot of people, especially with the whole COVID situation and everything shutting down, switched over uh, to doing their services and every anything that they would do usually in person, they switched over to doing it digitally. Um, we see that inside of the church and outside of the church as well. A lot of people also during the whole COVID pandemic being locked up inside as well have switched over to podcasting so they understand the frustration that comes with technical difficulties. You know, a lot of times we have this idea and this plan about this is the start time, this is how it's going to go, this is the flow, but technology has other plans in mind. Yeah, I mean, while we were recording our last episode, that same day, um, you know, Zencaster decided to update. <laughs> and Zencaster <laughs> updated their website, which is that's the program we use uh, when we record uh, when we're not together in the same building. And they in, had all these different features and they enhanced their program and it just messed up our flow. We were like, man, what's wrong? Like, you know, th- with with Zencaster, what's going on? So finally, we realized they updated, they added some new features, changed some things around, and it actually uh, like affected um, our you know podcast interview that day. We were interviewing our guests that you're going to hear today, and for some reason, it just uh, you know was not working out. And it actually, um, you know, Eddie, I know you were having problems. It kicked you out. Did yeah. this whole thing, um, but yeah. you know, we spoke afterwards, and I think we could both agree we felt. Um, um, a little crappy after the interview <laughs> because, uh, you know, it was like I had to continue it by myself. Obviously, you know, you had questions. I had questions. It's something that we do together. Um, yes. So and it, and it that- also happened. It also, and sorry to cut you off, it just yeah. also happened to be one of those days where we weren't recording in the same place. You know, right. we do try our best to always record together just to avoid that situation of having too many people, you know, on a program and, you know, the whole fear of it crashing. Um, and it just happened to be that the same day that we were not recording together, Zencaster went ahead and did an update that, you know mess not mess things up but mess things up <laughs> and then the internet was acting wonky so it was really a combination of a really bad domino effect but at the end of the day you know the party has to keep going regardless and that's also part of you know the age of technology knowing how to bob and weave and roll with the punches and you know just to continue to move forward for sure. And there were some things, I mean, just in looking back, I mean, like I said, afterwards, I didn't feel the greatest, you know, and we were kind of going back and forth talking about it and whatever. But um, there were, you know, obviously there are lessons that you learn along the way, right? And these are experiences yes. that, you know, we hold on to and we try to figure out, okay, what can we do next time? Or what do we learn from this and whatever? But there were a few things here that I think we can pull out of this situation that we'll dive into really fast. Um, one thing was just the idea of having a guest who you know, you invite to be on your podcast and you're excited to have them on. And then you have these technical difficulties. So you have to kind of work through the feelings of embarrassment, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> Feeling like, oh gosh, like, of course, you know, like we have to have these problems today and this is happening right now. Um, you know, and also just the idea of persistence, right? Having to persist, um, you know, through technical difficulties, having to keep going. But one thing that, you know, uh, 
I, you know, admired out of this whole thing. Um, you know, obviously when you do things by yourself, uh, you know, it's simple. You just, okay, it's just me. So I'm the, I'm only responsible for me, right? So I, whatever I do is going to affect, you know, the situation and that's it. Um, in this case, you know, or when you work with the team and there's more than, you know, just yourself working on something, you know, you have to, you know, be in agreement and kind of have that flow and that, you know, consistency. So, you know, we're, me and you, obviously we do the podcast together. We interview together and do everything together. Um, but you know, because of the tech technical difficulties happening on your end, uh, you were just kind of like, listen, continue the interview, do it without me, you know? And in the moment, yeah. uh, you know, it was like, man, like a lot of pressure and just trying to, you know, then <laughs> get the questions and everything together that you were going to present and all of that. But, you know, looking back at it, um, it also showed a sense of, you know what, I don't need to be a part of this moment right now. You know, you can do it, you can handle it. And um, I think in for me, uh, I was able to admire, I guess, you know, the fact that, you know, we are a team and, you know, when one of us in the moment can't do something or it's not working out or whatever, we have that trust to kind of be like, listen, you're going to have to go on without me and not take the mentality of, well, if I can't be a part of the interview, you know, this can't happen right now. So we need to reschedule <laughs> this, you know? So I think that's something really yeah. cool too that came out of this. Yeah. And, you know, that's also the great thing about planning as well. You know, we have our pre-recording chats and we really, you know, dive into each other's like thoughts and opinions on what we want to present, what we want to ask. So it is easier for us to be able to be like, you know what, this is not working out for me. At least for me, it was so much more easier for me to have, aside from the fact that I, I trust and have the confidence in your ability um, to to do what you have to do. But also we had these pre-conversations that is like, all right, he already knows where I was trying to go with certain questions or, you know, what I was trying to find out so that our viewers can get that information, our listeners can get that information as well. So, you know, it, it really is about that teamwork. So once you have an established relationship and teamwork, you know, it is easy to be like, all right, I'm going to pass you the ball. You're not going to fumble it. You're going to keep moving forward. On top of that, it's also great for guests that are gracious. You know, in no moment at all that I feel that our guest was frustrated did <laughs> or was like listen if you don't get this fixed in two seconds i'm out you know so when that's also another th great thing about it that you know when you have people that are aware of technology and how things may roll out sometimes you know it can be frustrating but it's also that level of being patient and understanding that is not unprofessionalism it's just that technology at times can be a little unreliable for sure. And today, uh, you know, we're excited for our guest. Um, you know, many of you probably have seen his videos either on TikTok or on Instagram, but he is, you know, pretty popular on, on TikTok. He has over 700,000 followers on there. Um, he's known for, you know, putting out a lot of, you know, Christian content and, you know, prayer videos and devotional videos, um, you know, and we got to sit down with uh, with him and, and you know, uh, have a conversation and talk about, you know, his upbringing, his social media platform, how he uses it. And um, I think you guys are really going to enjoy this episode. So Eddie, would you introduce our guest? Yes. So with that all being said, we're so happy and um, appreciative of the opportunity to have this conversation with Andrew F. Carter. So would you all please welcome uh, to the God Life Culture Podcast, Andrew F. Carter. Andrew, can you please say hello to our listeners? What is up, you guys? Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes. Now, Andrew, you are currently, you said, um, in California, correct? Yeah, that's right. I'm in Cali. And now, what's the weather like over there? Uh, about 70, 75, clear skies, and it is beautiful outside. I don't mean to rub it in. <laughs> Yeah, we're just a little jealous. Just a little jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. So, Andrew, can you please, um, for those listeners who may not be aware of your videos, may not have seen your videos, or may not know who you are, can you just share a little bit about who is Andrew F. Carter? Absolutely. So, um, you know, first and foremost, a child of God, man. I am a minister, um, run a nonprofit organization, uh, Andrew F. Carter Ministries. Um, I'm an author. And a social media influencer, and uh, you know that kind of that kind of wraps it up. I do I do quite a bit of different things. I also own a, a t-shirt company um, with that produces God God and faith apparel. 
That's awesome. And, you know, obviously you wear many hats and you are involved in a lot of different things. But, you know, my question is, what inspired you to start making these videos? I mean, many of your videos have gone viral and your numbers, your following has all grown. But, you know, what inspired you to start creating this content? Wow, that's a, it's, it's, a, it's a long story. I'll give you the Cliff Notes version. Is, um, I was called a long time ago to, to ministry. And, uh, you know, after, you know, my, my Jonah moment of running from God and the calling that he had on my life, um, I, I was just broken, kind of in a bad place. And I had TikTok and my kids, my kids had convinced me to download this TikTok app. And, um, you know, I was kind of having a bad day and I shared 15 second video of my testimony. And in that video, I didn't say a word. Um, I just pointed at a couple of boxes to some music and the the response to that, I went to, I went to bed with 200 followers and the next morning I woke up with about 15,000 followers. And it was just this epiphany that people are hungry uh, for the word of God. People want to hear about Christ. People want to know more about God. And so I was inspired to pursue that. Awesome. I mean, you know, and many people that come across your videos on social media, whether it's on TikTok or Instagram, I mean, I came across, uh, you know, one of your videos on Instagram, and that's how I started following you and seeing, you know, who you were and what you do. Um, you know, a lot of times it's just easy for us to see like the final product and to see the result, right? But behind every ministry, behind every calling, there's a story and a journey that many people don't really know about or see when they see the video, right? So can you talk a little bit um, about your upbringing, uh, your childhood? Like who was Andrew Carter before, you know, the viral videos and before, you know, being a social media influencer? Who were you before all of that? And before that, I was, I was a lost sheep. Um, I, I grew up in a very broken home. Um, both of my parents were drug addicts and uh, my mother was a, a prostitute. My dad was a pimp, um, her pimp to be exact. And wow. uh, grew up seeing a lot of abuse, drugs, alcohol. Um, I was in and out of foster care uh, growing up. And I mean, by the, the age of 12, 13, I was drinking and doing drugs and selling drugs and having sex. Um, I grew up in a very uh, worldly way. You know, sin was the norm in the way that I grew up. And Jesus was just a, a figment of my imagination. He was as real as the Easter Bunny or Santa Claus. He was just a baby in a manger that we get together around Christmas and we go to a school play and talk about, you know, I had no understanding of who God was. Right now, what, now what would you say, I guess, in your life, you know, growing up in this way, um, you know, I, I read that as, you know, you grew up and everything, you, there was a time in your life when you got to open up a business and you were running a gym and you were a very distinguished person in your community. You were very known. And, um, you, you know, you mentioned that everything looked great on the outside, but everything was kind of wrong on the inside. Um, you talked about, you know, you committed a crime and you had even went to prison for 18 months. And, you know, I know that all of the things that we go through in our life, um, you know, we don't go through it in vain, right? There, We don't just go through things in our life just to simply go through it. There are lessons that we learn along the way. There are testimonies and, you know, stories that are being created that, you know, now looking back, we know, man, like, you know, there were certain things I went through that God is now using um, to minister to people's lives. So what do you think were some of the lessons that you learned in that time period of your life that, um, you know, looking back now, you definitely can see that, you know, others can benefit from those lessons that you learned? Yeah, I think uh, two big things are discipline and consistency. Um, even in the midst of, you know, the craziness that I grew up in. Uh, when I was in foster care, I was in there for a year, my sophomore year of high school. And, uh, you know, going from living however I wanted to, you know, when I was 14, I was driving a car. I lived in an apartment by myself and was selling drugs. Like I was living wild. Well, the next year I was in a foster care and there, there was stability. So now I had to go to school every day. I had to, to show up. I had to get good grades. And what I realized is that with discipline and consistency, I could do anything that I could set my mind to. So that year in high school, I ended up playing uh, basketball. I led my team in scoring and rebound. I got like a 3.75 in school, which was the best that I had ever done to that point. And so I knew if I could control like the things that I could control, um, which is like stability and, and whatnot, that I could excel. And that's what led me to um, eventually opening a business, getting two college degrees, is that was a very 
um, pivotal point in my life to introduce those two aspects that I hadn't known before that. And I use it now in the spiritual aspect of consistently praying um, and disciplining myself to get into the word of God. And, to, you know, like you said, I post several times a day. So the consistency and discipline portion have really helped in my walk with Christ. Now, Andrew, what would you say, you know, um, would be that turning point in your life where, you know, you've gone through all of these different things, you've gone through all of these situations um, and life experiences. What would you say is that moment where you realized, wait a minute, you know, um, all of these things that I've been trying to do on my own, all of the, uh, you know, the mistakes and these errors and these empty wells that I keep going to for completion that, you know, only leave me more thirsty. You know, when did you realize like there has to be more to life than this? What was that yeah. moment like for you? It was, uh, it was, it was after prison um, because, you know, I had my Jonah moment where I was called to ministry when I was like 23 and ran from that calling because I, I never grew up wanting to be in ministry. I didn't want to be a pastor. I didn't want to tell people about God. Um, you know, I was barely hanging on by a thread, but uh, I went on to, to create the kingdom of Andrew. I, would, I, I usually call it where, you know, I had a gym and I was successful on the outside, but I lost everything. And so when I went to prison, um, I wasn't one of those guys who ran to Jesus when I was in prison. I was angry. I was mad at God because I had lost everything. Yeah. So I think one of the things that so many people can relate to is, you know, the idea of feeling angry at God or feeling mad at God. Um, I think oftentimes we have so many expectations and we have so many ideas that, um, you know, we think that our life is going to go a certain way or certain things are going to happen. And we are confronted with the reality that, you know, in our minds, we have a plan, but God has his purpose. Right. right. And there are often times where our plan will eventually have to meet God's purpose and have to surrender, you know, to his purpose. Um, you know, when you speak about, uh, you know, your life story and you speak about all of your experiences, um, there's a sense of redemption, you know, when you speak, there is, uh, you know, redemption in every, you know, in most, uh, st stories and scenarios that we find, where do you see God's redemption, um, in your life? You know, when you look back at all of this, where do you see his hand of redemption in your life? Yeah, it would, it would be the whole, uh, the, the prophecy that was spoken over my life coming to fruition. So, um, you know, I've, I've alluded to the fact that I was called to ministry, but it happened in a very prophetic manner. Um, the church that I was going to was having revival for a week. And for a week, we were fasting and going to a sermon, uh, a message every night. And at the end of the night, an evangelist would pop up um, and he would call one person from the, the crowd and he would prophesy over their life. And, uh, you know, all week I, I was waiting in anticipation, praying for God to speak into my life. And on the seventh night, the very last night of the revival, he called me up and his words were, were exactly that. I had words of gold and then I was called to ministry and then I would speak to millions of people and tell them about Jesus. And, the, you know, to give you an idea, the, the time of the timeline, it was like 2006, 2007. So, you know, there was no social media like there is now. So when he said that I would speak to millions of people, I didn't understand. I was, I was just like, this guy is crazy. There's like, what, I, what am I going to do? Get on my space and talk to right. <laughs> millions of people? Like, what is he, what is he talking about? And that was initially the, the push that led me away from the church. I left. And so I think that redeeming moment was when that video, you know, fast forward 12, 13 years went viral. And there was just this overwhelming sense of the Holy Spirit just saying, like, now is the time. This is what you were created for. And this is the fulfillment of that prophecy over your life. Wow. And I love that, you know, you speak about prophecy because I think it's something that uh, for many people, it kind of, you know, in today's age, weirds them out a little bit. Like they're just a little hesitant when it comes to that. Um, but, you know, I, I myself in my own life have been, uh, you know, blessed to have many, um, you know, prophetic messages, uh, you know, told and, and ministered to my life that you see come into fruition. But the key is that many times, you know, we expect it to look a certain way. Right. We expect yeah, it yeah. to, you know, be wrapped in a certain way. And we think like, man, God, what do you mean millions? Like, how does that how does that even work? I don't even know, you know, 40, 50, yeah. 60 people. How am I going to influence millions? Right. Or I only have 10 followers on my social media or 20 followers. How am I going to influence millions? And, you know, we serve a God of outcome. 
we serve a God of results. And many times he won't tell you about the journey. He won't tell you about the process. And that's where it's our job to trust that process and trust that journey that, uh, you know, we may not understand how it's going to happen or when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen, you know? And I love um, that you share that. And you talk about this viral video, right? That, um, you know, went viral all of a sudden and, you know, you saw the followers just trickling in and it was just crazy, um, a crazy impact, um, you know, with a big online platform and social media presence, uh, you know, comes harsh criticism at times. And I think many times this is something that everyone wants. Everyone wants a big platform. Everyone wants millions of followers, but that comes with a price, especially when you are a Christian influencer and you are sharing the word of God in the way you do. How do you handle the criticism that comes with having such a big online presence? Yeah, man, you nailed it. Uh, There is a lot of criticism, but I believe that part of the journey, um, God was preparing me for that as well. Um, one, one thing that I really like to, to say is that you don't have to stop and throw stones at every dog that barks. And that was mm. something that, um, really has resonated in my life and has taken a long time for me to, to get a hold of, because I always felt like I would have to defend myself in comments or I had to respond to everything. And, uh, I mean, even just as recent as the last six months, there's been a big transformation. And, um, as I've grown, you know, the, you're, you're in front of more people. And so there's more criticism and, I don't think that everybody's built to handle that kind of pressure, but um, with a good support group, my, my wife primarily and my team, uh, they definitely support me and uh, encourage me and just keep me you know, on the right track. Yeah. I mean, you know, you did just say about your wife and I know you recently got married. Um, You know, you put it out on social media. So congratulations, you know, uh, to you and your wife. Um, You know, you guys have also done videos together and, you know, have, uh, you know, continued to be a blessing. How did you and your wife meet? How is that story? Oh, that's a, that's an amazing story. So um, (laughs) the, well, it's great because we met during the, the pandemic and, through quarantine from two different states. So wow. um, I, li- I lived in Oregon last year and uh, the video that I'm talking about, the viral video, it got posted on social media on Instagram by one of uh, the largest Christian pages. It's called Trust God Bro, ran by my yeah. friend Brandon. So he posted this post and um, you know she just happened to go by it and, and seen it and liked it and checked out my page and seen that I was putting out good content and followed me um, as well as you know another two, three, 4,000 people and uh, just her, the follow notification popped up when I was on my phone and uh, I decided to see what her profile was about. And she's in kids ministry and outreach. And, um, you know, some of her posts are overseas, you know, feeding the ho- like kids, hungry kids. Wow. So I decided to follow her back. I was like, this is, this is great. Um, so, you know, we, we chatted a little bit back and forth and uh, within two weeks, you know, I, I had booked a flight to go meet her in person in California. And so I flew down and met her and she's everything that she said that she was and um, you know, who she put herself out there to be a a woman who loves Jesus and uh, really follows his teachings. And I mean, it was just one of those moments where when you know, you know, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And especially, um, you know, in these times that we're living in, you know, with this pandemic that we just, uh, you know, recently faced, and we're still kind of recovering from, um, you know, I did hear about a lot of people who, you know, were, uh, you know, who are single, who had that fear of, you know, this doesn't help, right? This doesn't help, you know, how am I going to find, um, you know, the one that God has for me? How am I going to, you know, connect with people when we can't even leave our homes and all of these different things? And, you know, you just really never know um, how God is going to connect you with those people who he wants to be in your life, you know, and he will do what he needs to do. He will make a video go viral if he has to, in your case, (laughs) you know, and I think everybody wishes that, you know, this was their story, right? Like they just find someone and it's just like, oh yeah, we hit it off right off the bat. You know, this is not everyone's story, but it's just an example that, um, you know, it is possible uh, you know, to connect with people and to meet, um, you know, men and women of God, um, you know, who are who they say they are, right? Yeah. And I believe that when God connects you with these people, they're of help to your life, they build you up, they edify you. And, um, you know, they they are the ones that God truly puts 
um, by your side. You know, now speaking of the pandemic and and speaking of all of that, how did you, uh, you know, go through that time? You know, I understand, I know uh, for many different people, there's so many different stories and scenarios that of, of things they went through in that time. Um, what was that time of quarantine and um, isolation during the pandemic like for you? Well, you know, I'm, I'm one of the people who I, I don't think that I took it as serious as I should have initially. I didn't know the implications or how, you know, serious it was going to get. And so I was really focused on um, building my platform and just getting closer to God. So it was, um, you know, it was just one of those moments where as this was unfolding, I had my nose in my Bible. I was in prayer. I was, um, you know, going to church until they shut down. Like I was really focused on my ministry and uh, creating content and growing in that aspect. And so, uh, you know, where a lot of people have had a hard time, um, I believe, you know, God has put me in this position and I've, I've thrived uh, with, with the help of uh, my wife and with the help of my supporters and, and the people around me. Um, 2020 was actually a really great year. Uh, being that I was covered by the blood of Christ, that everything that I was doing was in line with God's plan and purpose that he had for me. Amen. And I think that so many people can relate to that as well, because although it was a hard year for so many, um, I do believe that there are those who actually, like you said, thrived in 2020, who God extended mercy and grace and compassion, and they were able to reach goals and accomplish new things in their life. And, um, you know, I think one important thing you said was the idea that, you know, you had your nose in your Bible and you were just studying and and building your ministry and, and doing all of those things. Um, you know, when it comes to these videos, videos and TikTok and Instagram, all these different things that you do. Um, can you talk a little bit about the process of the preparation, um, you know, before the video? I'm sure this isn't like, all right, press play. I'm picking a random verse today. I'm sure there is some type of, you know, preparation and thought and even, you know, spiritual uh, guidance that that you ask the Lord for, you know, so on any given day when you're recording a video, what is that preparation like for you? Yeah, it's, it's the same thing. And this is where the discipline and consistency comes in is um, I have a pretty routine setup that I do is I, I usually and if you watch my videos, I'm always in my Jeep. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I hop in there and, uh, you know, I'm just in prayer. And I have a devotional that I read from um, in my Jeep. I have about 12 different books. So I just spend time in God's presence, prayer, worship. And uh, as I'm reading, I just allow God to speak to my heart. And every message, you know, they're, they're not, they're not written out. They're not, um, you know, something that I've put a lot of thought in. I just allow myself to be a vessel for the Holy spirit and let God speak through me. So, um, you know, the preparation is just kind of preparing my mind and my body and my heart, um, and my, my spirit to allow God to use me. Awesome. And I recently saw on your Instagram live that, uh, you were on live and you were talking about, um, I believe it's a church that you are starting or a ministry you're starting on YouTube. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. You know, God has been putting it on. I mean, he has unraveled the plan that he has for me. Um, he's given all of the downloads to my wife more than anybody because she's speaking a lot of this stuff. This is what you should do. This is what God, you know, this is the direction that God has you going in and I'm just here for it. I'm just like, all right, Lord, it's a surrendered. Yes. Like use me. But we, uh, he put it on our heart to start a nonprofit. And so we started Andrew F. Carter ministries, um, as a nonprofit so that we can give back to the homeless here in Los Angeles. We've connected with several different, uh, you know, organizations. And so, um, what God put on my heart was that we needed to start holding church. So, I mean, part of my videos are the prayers. I do the little TikToks, but every day, I post a five to 15 minute sermon yeah. And over the, yeah. And over the last year I've had the opportunity to speak at different churches and uh, to step in and, and do some different messages. I've been to youth camps and things like that. And uh, you know, people need a little bit more. And so I decided, and I think, and God led me to, to start putting out, you know, a weekly church service. Awesome. Awesome. So definitely, you know, be on the lookout for that, um, you know, on Andrew's social media. Um, and if you're not connected to him on social media, Andrew, can you just, uh, you know, shout out all of your socials and where they could find you um, and find all of your videos? Yeah. So Andrew F. Carter is the handle and that's on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, even I even got a LinkedIn. Okay. Update, <laughs> but yeah, man, I'm, I'm everywhere. And it's Andrew F. Carter uh, across the board. Nice, nice. Now, Andrew, before we go, I want um, I want you to speak to 
uh, you know, our listeners and, you know, those listeners who right now may be struggling, um, may be questioning their faith, questioning this whole, you know, Christianity, Jesus, God thing. They may not be, you know, 100% convinced. Um, they may have struggles, you know, whether it's addictions and, and things like that. Can you just, um, you know, in the next, uh, you know, few seconds or so, just, uh, you know, speak to those individuals, those individuals who are struggling right now in believing? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. You know, everybody, everybody struggles. It just varies by degree. We're all dealing with something, something, uh, some shape or form or size, and it looks different. But uh, the thing that we have to hold on to and remember is that regardless of our circumstances, God doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, the promises in the word of God are immutable. They don't change. And so when you're feeling down and out, depressed, you're, you're exhausted, you feel like your back is against the wall, retreat to the word of God and remind yourself of who he is. It says that uh, he is your source of comfort. He is your source of peace. He is your source of joy. Uh, he will give you love. Uh, and, and you have to remind yourself of who you are and who the, the, what the word of God says about you. It says that we are children of God, that we have been chosen and set aside, that we are a royal priesthood. We have been given authority by the blood of Jesus, and we need to exercise that and start walking in that. And if you feel like doors and opportunities are closing and uh, you know, you're swimming against the stream, I would encourage you just to take a step back and step into prayer and ask God to be the light to your path, you know, really give, give you that direction and give you that guidance. Because a lot of the time, those closed doors are redirection. And God wants to take you in a, a different route. He wants to take you down a different path. And the path and plan that he has for your life is to prosper and not just financially, but emotionally, spiritually, in your health, in every aspect of your life. So when you're down and you're out and you feel like you're ready to give up, there's no answer like the answer that Jesus is going to give you. There's no other place that you should look than to the word of God. And uh, you take it to the throne, ask Jesus into your situation and he'll answer. Amen. Amen. So all of those listening, be sure to subscribe, to follow Andrew, um, you know, again, on his social media, Andrew F. Carter, um, his messages, his videos will definitely bless your life. His testimony will definitely bless your life. Um, I know for one, I have been so blessed just, you know, aside from just the videos and everything, but hearing your story and hearing from, you know, where God has taken you from, um, it's inspiring and it's moving and it does give hope and it does give um, this sense of peace knowing that if right now in your life you don't feel like God is able to use you or you don't you know see how it's possible, just know that if you are breathing, there is still hope. Just know that, you know, even in the midst of that confusion or in the midst of that struggle that you are in, if God has declared something over your life, it will come to pass. And, you know, listening to Andrew speak today and listening um, to his story, you know, he needed to obey, you know, and he needed to, to obey God's word and he needed to do what God called him to do. And when he did that, that's when he began to see God move in his life. And for you, it may, you know, not be on social media, but it could just be a conversation you have with someone, you know, that you come in contact with. It could just be the way you live and carry yourself that speaks and ministers to someone's life. So thank you so much, Andrew, for being a guest on our podcast, for, for sharing with us, for taking out the time, for, uh, you know, for being here with us. I know that so many people will be blessed by this conversation. You're absolutely welcome, man. Thank you for having me. All glory. Once again, we're so thankful to have Andrew F. Carter on today's podcast. I don't know about you, but it is, you know, quite extraordinary to hear somebody's story and their testimony just to get a little bit of an insight of who they are and where they come from. And, you know, that whole idea and mentality about their relationship with God. You know, Andrew F. Carter is someone who a lot of you have seen on social media posting his positive, inspirational videos, whether it's on TikTok or Instagram or whatever it is uh, that you have. Um, so sometimes it's great to find a little bit about the story behind the videos. Yeah. And I think it's just awesome to hear that, you know, we don't always have it all together for our entire life. You know what I mean? Um, and I think a lot of times people just see the videos, they see the results of things, but they don't know the journey and the story. And Andrew is an example of someone, um, you know, who went through it 
uh, made mistakes, learned from them, and, you know, experienced God's redemptive power, God's restoration. And he is no um, exception. You know, wherever you may find yourself right now, you can experience God's redemption. You can experience his restoration. He could turn uh, your life around completely when you surrender to him. So I think it's definitely uh, encouraging and amazing to uh, hear a story like Andrew's. Yeah, so if you aren't already following him, be sure to find him on TikTok, on Instagram as Andrew F. Carter. You can always Google him, Andrew F. Carter Ministries, and I'm pretty sure Google will send you to all the links of his socials so that you can follow him and support him on his uh, his old journey. Because this is, you know, it's part of, he has it, Andrew F. Carter Ministry. It's part of his ministry. It's also part of his journey. So we're definitely looking forward to see what are the great things God has in store for him. For sure. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast so you could be notified when we drop a new episode. We have some exciting guests coming up in the next few weeks. So you definitely want to stay connected so you can, uh, you know, check out our brand new episodes. And don't forget, like always, to leave us that review and that rating because we so appreciate it. So once again, we want to thank you for tuning into the God Life Culture podcast. That's God, God Life Culture. Culture. Until next time. See ya. Bye. Bye.